what are HubSpot playbooks and why should you use them? All that coming up here in this video. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot playbooks are one of those favorite features of mine in HubSpot. It used to be only available in sales enterprise. Now it's available in sales pro with a little bit of less functionality, but the consistency is the same. This is going to be the plays that you can run with your sales team as they're interacting with prospective customers or even current customers and upselling them. So you ask consistently the same questions and then lead that through so you get the information you need to most likely prepare a quote or send them to the next stage in the sales process. So let's dive in and actually take a look at how this functions inside of HubSpot and talk about some use cases for your company. So here inside of our HubSpot, we have a test portal and we've loaded our favorite Michael Scott in here. So if Michael Scott was someone that I had a call with coming up here in the next several days, I might want to use a playbook to guide my call so that I'm asking the same questions that I would ask every other prospect that interacts with me for the first time. So you're gonna find playbooks in the sales dropdown under playbooks. So if you go here, you'll see all the playbooks that are currently available and visible to you in the organization. Now, if you have Sales Pro and there aren't any playbooks loaded here, this is probably one of your first action items to do after the call or after this video watching here is talk to your team. Why aren't we using playbooks? But think about this, a lot of companies that I talk to, they might have playbooks that are in the form of sales decks or they might have like a scripted intro and series of questions they need to ask. That's the perfect use case to bring that into HubSpot because not only does it take the thinking out of where is that saved and where do I find it, but it also then saves it into their contact record so it's easily accessed after you interact with that prospect. So I'm gonna actually go back to Michael Scott's record here. And the way that you would um, use this is, I have a call with Michael Scott over on the right hand side, I've got these playbooks. I can actually pick which playbook I want to use. So I'm gonna use this discovery call playbook. So if I load this, then I can see this is the series of questions that I'm going to ask in a sales meeting. Now, as we walk through this, you'll see that we've got some additional, you can add notes in here for your reps. Like not only is this the question, but here's some things to keep in mind as you're um, asking the question. So again, think about this like sports. I've got, you know, I'm the quarterback and I've got all the plays here on my arm, but these are the things that'll happen once that play is in motion. So what you see here in the middle of the screen, these are actually going to be specific fields that exist in HubSpot and I can ask the question and however they answer it, I can actually select that field and then get this. It updates their contact record in that field. So that eventually, let's say I've had 50 calls in the last month, I can actually have a list created from everybody that said improve close rates and segment that way. That's only possible in Sales Pro and I'll show you how that manifests itself here as we kind of build our first playbook together. But think about this as a sales rep, it takes the thinking out of some of this, especially if you're new to the process, if you were selling for my company, we sell HubSpot consulting services, clearly, and some of the questions that you might not know to ask initially, you learn, but right out of the gate, you've got those questions here in this playbook. So if I was to fill this out, I might say the budget is, let's say 25,000, 25, um, you know, they wanna improve their close rates, and then this person's role is here, and then we're going to go ahead and log this call. Now, down here at the bottom, we have outcome and call type. These are gonna be important because some of the information you can, like when you look at what's happened on a sales call, you probably wanna analyze how that went. And here, this playbook does not have a specific meeting type link to it. Now I wanna jump over to our portal in real life at Simple Strat and show you how we've actually linked this to a specific call type so that I know when someone has this playbook run, it's a consultation call. So let's jump over there. So I'm gonna pull up this playbook here and you can see that in the bottom, this is already filled out. It's already telling me that this playbook was used for a consultation call. And the reason is when we set up that playbook and you click on edit, we've got settings here that tell us these are the two things that we can actually designate on playbooks as you're setting up the new playbook. So I'm gonna jump back over to Michael Scott and we're gonna go ahead and save this record. We're going to log it and outcome we connected. The call type was, we don't have any of those set up in the test portal, so I'm just gonna click log the call. Now, what that does is it logs the call here in the middle of your activity feed. It tells me who I talked with. It also says any of these details that came out of that call. And then here we've got all of the things that we just talked about inside of their contact record in the activity feed for all of my team to see. 
It's not saved on a computer, it's not saved on a desktop. And again, it was very simple, stupid to walk through those steps. But if you do that right, the sales team should feel more empowered to dig into the questions instead of remembering what to ask. So that is how playbooks are used. Now let's actually jump over to playbooks and step into um, creating them. Cause this is where the beauty of strategy and how you want to use them in your organization is really going to play out. So go to sales and click on playbooks. So when you create a playbook, there's going to be suggestions on the left-hand side of the page. HubSpot always gives you suggestions to get started. And usually these are kind of just like brain ticklers because everyone's going to be a little bit unique. But think about right now, if you had the best way to get early wins from the playbooks is what are you already doing that you could pull into a playbook? Do you already have a list of five questions that you ask in an initial point in the sales journey? So I'm going to go back to the idea of a discovery playbook and we don't have that over here. So I'm just going to put discovery as the title. And as I create this playbook, there's going to be opportunities here. So it's just like a WYSIWYG editor inside of, let's say, any other application, a wiki or whatever. I can insert text, I can bold it, I can make it bigger, whatever. I'm just gonna say, use this playbook um, for a first call with a client. Okay, so since this test portal is on HubSpot Sales Enterprise, you're going to see include a question let answered. And when I click on edit, over here, you're gonna see I can have open text fields, I can have custom answers, or I could use a set of answers that saves to a property. Now, that is the beauty that we're looking for in terms of efficiency long-term, if you can get stuff up front that is part of a segmentation. So for example, let's say that I want to have marketing to people who are in my sales funnel, because my sales cycle might be long, but the problems that a zero to 25 employee company faces is probably different than a company of 200 employees of 500. So if I have select property type, and let's say the property type is, um, I'm going to say company size. And because of that, that might be a way that I wanna segment the information afterward, but it's also important to capture on the discovery call. So if you think about some of the things that you want to measure on the call that are part of also questions, you may think, is that property currently in HubSpot? If it's not, you're gonna to wanna to go and create that property and then ideally arrange that property in the contact or company record and then pull it into the playbook here. So if that any of that's confusing or you think, gosh, I need someone to help me with that, reach out, let us know. Otherwise, watch our videos about how to create um, uh, new fields and kind of arrange those in HubSpot. So I'm gonna actually go back to open text only. So if you're using Sales Pro, you will see playbooks as an option, but you will only have the option to create open text fields. So these two options below will actually be grayed out if you're a Sales Pro user. And actually, I think that's fine because you need to have um, additional value to upgrade to Sales Enterprise, and this might be the place you find it. But here again, ask the questions you would ask, just like I showed you here in our playbook for um, the HubSpot consultation, we just ask a series of questions. We're not asking specific things. We could, we could ask what level of HubSpot do you have? And actually denote that in their property fields, but we don't because we find that sometimes people don't know what level of HubSpot they have. Well, it's a good question. The data that we get is not that great. So in terms of using this in your playbook um, creation, get those five or six questions that you ask, put them in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and do that here. So we're just gonna ask, um, what are your goals? Uh, let's see here, insert. Oh, so actually this is a good this is a good point to, to stop on. You can insert a video in your playbooks. So it might be the idea of here's how to run a really great sales call. And that's your video. You embed that in your playbook your prospect will not see this. Again, keep in mind, this is all backward facing in terms of like back of the house, but this might remind someone to watch the video before a call so they have a really good idea of here's how to open a call and close a call effectively, sharpen those skills and put that right there in that playbook. So we're gonna insert another question here and to make sure that you have, like sometimes this gets grayed out at the top if your mouse isn't under the next, uh, like under this question here. So if I'm up here, um, or here, it's not gonna let me, but I'm gonna click down here at the bottom. So I wanna insert another question and answer. And again, if I'm HubSpot Pro, I don't have these two fields down here, but we're gonna use an opportunity to um, basically seed the answer so that it's easier for folks to respond. So if I say, um, you know, what do you hope to accomplish in a project with us? And I'm gonna say in terms of quick replies, 
I just can put in things that you might suggest. So sometimes when we ask questions in a sales call, we the prospect isn't quite sure how to answer it because it might be a little bit too ambiguous or they're not sure what we're looking for. And so I might say, hey, what do you hope to accomplish in a project with us? Most people have three or four different types of, of projects. I'm, I'm just gonna suggest a few, if, if any of these sound relevant, let me know. So, um, you know, get more out of HubSpot, um, increase user adoption, um, explore integrations, or maybe clean up our data, okay? So these are things that we hear all the time. And if I click on save, you can also have an open note field if that person doesn't agree with any of those four, that's fine. So again, I'm gonna insert one more, more question um, and it's gonna say um, next steps. And this might not be a question, it's just for you to document what you discussed those next steps were from the call and then ultimately when you submit that playbook, it'll show up in their contact record. So now that I've got these three here, I've got my settings and again, the engagement type is gonna be a call. And then if I click on publish, it's going to show my discovery call playbook. We just made it a few seconds ago. It looks like we've already got a discovery call playbook. So if this is the case, I probably wanna to talk to my team about naming structure so that we don't have four or five different versions of what we think the same thing is. So if I were to put this to use then, I would have a contact and we're gonna go into here and let's say that I've got this uh, Michael Scott here and Michael Scott again has another call with me and we're gonna go and use that playbook we just created and it's gonna pull up and it's gonna do exactly what we just showed in our previous example. So that's it, that's how to use playbooks. And I think, again, this is one of the most powerful things a sales team could use to build consistency, build that trust, and ultimately focus more on the person and less on the questions that you have to ask every time because they're right in front of you. Couple of use cases to think about here. One, you again, discovery calls, proposal calls, follow-ups, but also think you could use these to ask the right questions that you wanna get client feedback. Case studies, success calls, onboarding calls. There's lots of ways to use playbooks and again, increase that consistency and the ability to capture and share all the right information so that your prospects and customers have the best experience possible. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week.